In this video, we're going to talk about how to prove segment relationships. And to start us off, we're going to look at a proof. And we have this picture here, and then it tells us that our given information is that JL is congruent to KM. So basically, from here to here is the same as from here to here. That's what we are given. And it wants us to prove that JK is congruent to LM. In other words, JK congruent to LM. So what we have to do first is we have to get our uh, two-column proof all ready to go. And of course, when we start this, in any kind of proof, the first thing that we always do is list the given information. Just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my given information and see what else I can conclude from it. And what I know for sure is that if I have a segment congruent to another segment, I know that their lengths are equivalent as well. So I can say that JL is equal to KM. And my reason for this is, again, it was my knowledge of what congruence means. So in this case, my reason is definition of congruence. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to break apart my segment that I have in my picture so that I can get some more information because I know that there's that segment addition postulate out there that says if I add two segments, it's equivalent to the entire segment itself. So when I look at my picture, I know that if I add JK to KL, that gives me JL. And that's important because in my given information, JL is part of that given. So that's important. So we're going to start there. There we go. And again, this is my segment addition postulate. So I'm going to abbreviate that by SAP. And we can actually do that again to get something for KM because that's another part of my given information here. So I could say also that LM plus KL is KM, and that could also be helpful. And again, even if you're not sure where you're going, list out as many different pieces of information that you can. So there we go. I added that into our proof. So now we have two different um, segments added together to give us both of the segments that we started off in our given information. And what's really cool, what we have right now is in parts C and D of my proof, I actually have two parts that happen to be the same exact thing. So that's something to look out for, okay? What we also know is that here I have those two segments adding up to JL, and I have these two segments adding up to KM. And we actually started with this information that they are congruent to each other. So what I can say now is that these two segments, when I add them together, should be equivalent to the sum of these two. So basically all I did is I replaced um, my JL and KMs with the segments that they're equivalent to. So what I mean by that is when you look up here in part A, I replaced JL, in fact it's actually more like the second statement, but I replaced JL with JK plus KL, and I replaced KM with KL plus LM. So when I do replacing like that, that's called substitution. So that's going to be my answer or my reason for a part E. So now what I'm going to do is kind of go back to my original statement and make sure I'm on the right track. So if we look here carefully, I'm trying to prove that JK is congruent to LM. If you look back at our proof, we're actually almost there. Here's JK and here's LM. And that thing that I was talking about before where this guy is the same as this, well now we get to use that. What would happen if I actually subtracted KL out from both sides? What would happen there? And the answer is, is that they're going to cancel. They're going to go away. And they are going to give me that JK, JK is equal to LM. So the way that I got there is I subtracted KL from both sides, so my reason is subtraction. So we're almost there because right now I have those two segments equal to each other, but I need them to be congruent to each other. 
So we know that from the first part of this proof that if I have two segments equal to each other, that that, um, by the definition of congruence, that they are also congruent. So there we go, and we have proved what we wanted to. And that's going to conclude this tutorial.